And we're back. Alright, before we talk to that lady, let's just make sure we're all up to speed on the magic we have. Dante has all the magic he can get. Lynx has all the magic she can get at the moment. Uh, she doesn't actually have access to her level 8 spells, but that, of course, will change pretty quickly. Anyway, lady, I brought you your Paradox Liquid. Can and will do, lady. Hey, don't float in away in the middle of our conversation. It's rude. Oh, and she disappears. Thanks for making this awkward, lady. Well, anyway, let's take our air-producing water, get in this barrel, and just float down to a shrine beneath the sea. Logic! Just a quick note. Uh, in the NES version, this was actually an actual submarine instead of a dinky little barrel. Why they decided to downgrade it, I have no clue, but, um, I guess it works somehow? I really hope no one sees me washing up to the dungeon in this thing. It'll be really embarrassing. I'll be the laughing stock of the whole dungeon! Who cares if I can kill everyone easily? Like these guys. They don't seem to be laughing. They seem to be kind of stoic, but hey, whatever. Plus, they are easily killable. Like, I, I don't get why there's a shark here, to be honest. We've been able to kill them for pretty much the entirety of the game that we've been seeing them. Uh, the purple sharks, on the other hand, they're kind of tough. I mean, not really, but this one survived, so they've got some HP. I don't know why they're called white sharks, though, because they're clearly primarily gray and purple, but uh, hey, it doesn't bother me. Just because I call them purple sharks doesn't mean I get hung up about it. You're overreacting, shut up! I don't have a problem. Anyway, this is actually one of the better dungeons in the game, I think. Although, I'm guessing people don't like it, because, uh, the first thing we need to do is actually head to a dead end. Thing is, though, it's a dead end with a lot of stuff. And not only that, it's a dead end with important stuff. So a lot of, well, important stuff amongst all the lot of stuff. Anyway, one of the reasons this dungeon is awesome, because they basically pull an equivalent to pretty much how sci-fi handles space, so... You know, you know how you can just say, oh hey, here's a dog in space. It's a space dog. Well, here it's, oh look, we have a dog. It's under the sea. It's a sea dog. Now it's an ocean enemy. That's always pretty neat. Of course, then again, sea snakes are an actual thing, so I guess I can't complain about that, but they can be kinda silly with it. But anyway, this dungeon itself is a... <sighs> oh, see what I mean? Sea trolls, sea scorpions. I don't think sea scorpions are actual things. Could be. Not really good with marine life, but I'm pretty damn sure sea trolls aren't actual things. Of course, now I really want to see a troll swimming in the ocean. Just for the hell of it. Would be entertaining. Sea trolls, by the way, as bad as threatening as regular trolls. Except with slightly more HP, I guess. Of course, they are also weak to electricity, just like all the rest of the enemies in this dungeon, because they're water enemies and therefore electricity beats them. So, anyway, about the dungeon. I actually really like this one that... <sighs> for crying out loud. Oh, this one isn't actually called Sea Eyes, it's actually called Deep Eyes, which... Actually, that's kind of clever, because get it? Get it? Because they're located deep under the sea. Deep Eyes. Also, it's so get easy to get lost in their pupils. Anyway, so... <sighs> and water elementals. I can't tell if they're more or less lazy than the previous elementals. You know, how fire elementals were just recolors of the earth elementals. While these guys aren't recolors, they're just little tornadoes. Tornado guys. So... Anyway, I think aesthetic-wise, this area is actually pretty cool. Blah blah blah. I didn't like Earth Gift or uh, Cavern of Earth or whatever it's called. I thought it looked boring, but this one actually looks pretty nice. I gotta sound for crying out loud.
Anyway, Sea Shrine actually looks pretty nice, and I think they actually... Okay, we have ghosts. I don't know why these guys are called ghosts, because that seems kind of like it should be the basic class name, but they're clearly new guys, because we haven't seen red ghosts before, but... You'd think these guys would be wraiths or whatever, and then the first guys would just be ghosts, but eh, whatever. Weird decision. I don't get it, but let's just move on. Anyway, I think they did a pretty good job uh, touching it up from the original version. I mean... They did it for all the versions, but I think it looks particularly nice here. Wait, Sahag and Prince? Hey! You haven't gotten back to me in ages! For crying out loud, I gave you my bank information, and I, s and I seem to remember something about money. I, I didn't read the email, but I'm pretty sure you mentioned money. But did you get back to me? No! You, I just gave you my bank information, and that was it! That was it! So you know what? Now you're dead! You and all your chiefs! Fucking dead! That's what you get for not maintaining contact. I hope we've learned a lesson. Alright. Anyway, I think they did a pretty good job touching this area up. I know they did that for all the areas, but it looks really nice here. Especially now that the ledges are all jagged and all that. Rather than, uh, certain, uh, little ledges in the original version were just, like, squares or something. Can't remember exactly what it looked like, but definitely looks nice here, even though it's kind of strange how there's just this huge pocket of air down here somehow. somehow. I mean, it got a lot of air. you think it would be a bit more flooded. But, I'm not gonna question it. Also, Magistaff, Gatsfira. So, it looks nice, but it... I must admit, I also like the, uh, music that plays here. I'm not really a fan of, uh, more peaceful con compositions usually. I usually like the more faster paced, paced songs like the uh, mini boss theme, but I actually really like this one. It sounds pretty nice. Anyway, we're all actually already to this dead end, and uh, you know the nice part about this area? No enemy encounters. It's sort of like a mini village just in the middle of a dungeon. You get a lot of items, and there are NPCs to talk to, so isn't that just great? Oh, I'm Oh, it's a, uh, armor. So, I guess I'll give that to uh, Link, since it's good for my white mage to get more defense. And, uh, that's good. Anyway, lots of diamond equipment down here. Most of it is, uh, exclusive tonight, other than that one piece of thing we just got. But some pretty nice items, including one we need to get, so... Of course, we'll have to go find that. Shouldn't be a problem at all, because, again, no enemy encounters. Woo. It is a bit annoying to navigate, though. Uh, was she the lady who floated off into nothingness, or was she the one near the bonus dungeon? Because, uh, if it's the former, I've kind of got bad news. Uh, uh, water! I have water, lady! Get out of my face! Anyway, yeah. Area, very kind of annoying to navigate, because there are just random cracks in the area. I mean, hey, aesthetically, it's kind of nice, because, you know, ruins and all that, but... Nonetheless, it does kind of get annoying to navigate. Oh, hey, Rosetta Stone! Huh. I think someone wrote over the Egyptian. Also, this is kind of cruel. and the original version, that was just sort of a ledge you know, what that area, but, uh, and the remakes, they seem to have just, uh, made it seem to go farther out, as if there's something actually there, which is kind of nice, because, you know, you, you get to see something that we can't necessarily access, it makes it seem bigger than it actually is, but were the chests in, was that NPC really necessary? Because at that point, they're just taunting you, really. Wow, how am I getting lost in this area? Hmm. You know, I said there were useful items, but as per usual, it's just a lot of gill. Hey, all these mermaids, man. They're, they're all just hung up on the fact that they'll become foam and wash away in the waves. They don't really have anything useful to say due to the fact that, well, what else is there to say? We're here to save them, and they have no useful information for us because, 
we already know what we need to know to save them. Oh, actually... Okay, so that's vaguely useful for the next area. Alright, mermaid. You are the exception to the rule. Antidote, you're no exception. You still suck. Oh, wait, there... Okay, so apparently I just completely missed that little path. Well, not permanently missed it, but I did briefly miss it. Diamond shield, very useful for now. So I'm going to equip it to my knight, because no one else can use it. And that's pretty much all there is to this floor, so um, I guess I'll uh, head back to the entryway. So uh, yeah, I'll go do that after I'm done being lost. Oh hey, look at that, I got a level in the middle of this whole thing. Ah, well, I suppose I'm close enough where I can just cut back in from this, so we'll do that. Alright, so, we're almost back just as soon as we descend this staircase, because if you'll remember, the third floor is the, uh, first floor, technically. Because there are, of course, basements. Well, not really basements, but you get the point. We came in in the middle of this whole thing, and yet we never dive underwater. That's too bad. But then again, remake of an NES game can't do anything too fancy. Which, I guess, people might not like about this, because the dungeon design isn't... It isn't that complex, but, you know, it it's not too bad either. I mean... This dungeon in particular, while there's nothing too noteworthy about it, that's actually kind of nice because it's a bit of a departure from the other two dungeons, which all of them, well, both of them rather, they both had really annoying rooms at some point that I really didn't like, unless it was the Earth Cavern. I just didn't like that one in particular. But nonetheless, this one isn't exactly noteworthy, but eh, you know what? It's, it is fun. It's kind of nice. And plus, there's the fact that it's, there are a few treasures off the beaten path, but nothing that will really draw you away too much. Well, okay, there are these right here, but it's, it's not like you're going too much out of your way for these things, right? Also, what do the Giant's Gloves do? They suck, but they also cast Saber. I guess that's decent. Yeah, those suck on everyone, right? And, of course, you can't use them. Now, this this area does, of course, have a few maze-like qualities, like this sec- wait, really, a second light axe? I'm pretty sure we picked one up earlier, right? Pretty sure. Anyway, it can be kind of maze-like, though this floor isn't actually too bad. I think it's the next floor that can be a bit annoying. Run into the bastard a second time, and what does he do? He sick some dumb purple sharks on me. I swear. I, I, I just, I was gonna say hi, I, I was gonna, you know, be a bigger man and admit I was wrong to murder him the first time, but you know what, that was deserved. Alright, anyway, so, items, wow, really, just gill? Ooh, second ribbon, okay, that's very, very useful. I think I'm gonna give this one to Dante, since he also sort of cures status effects. Don't really care if it were to uh, get rid of any defense or something like that. Ribbons are very, very useful, and I like them. Alright, we're actually on the first floor, and there are no basements here, so we know that this is actually the last one. Yeah, this one's a bit more of a maze, so watch where you go, because, uh, you know, there are a few different paths, most of them are useless. Like this one that I've apparently gone down, because I'm dumb. Okay, so apparently I'm not paying attention. But hey, you know, it happens now and then, you go off on the wrong path, you get attacked by enemies, you get poisoned, and... Oh, this room. Uh, I'd also like to point out this room looks much nicer than it did in the NES version. In the original version, it were, there were just large squares that looked like weird pits or something like that. It actually kind of looked really weird in the NES version, but anyway, we're actually at the uh, last floor. This is it. This is the Fiend of Water. That's a bit of a lame introduction for this guy. Which I feel is quite unfair. He should have had a more grand introduction. 
Should have had a nice little orchestra playing for him. And thus, we fight the Fiend of Kraken... Or, Fiend of Water Kraken. Now, I must admit, I really don't like this guy's PSP sprite because it makes him look like a monster for some reason, and I just don't get that. I mean, Kraken here is clearly a gentleman. Look at that. Look at that. Look at him, he sprays ink at me. Anyway, aside from the ink puking, he looks quite dignified, quite the refined pose he has. Anyway, Kraken is probably one of the most difficult bosses of the uh, Four Fiends. Now, he doesn't really have that much in terms of abilities. I mean, you already saw Ink. It has the chance to blind certain characters. It's not that good. His attack power, however, is very, very good. And what do you know? He just demonstrated it right there. He gets eight hits because, of course, Octopus. Eight, eight tentacles. Makes sense, right? So yeah, he can do quite a bit of damage, so make sure protects up, because if it's not, uh, you could be in a bit of trouble. But other than that, he's a little easier than, uh, I was about to call her Karen, because, oh, Merilith. Uh, he's a bit easier than Merilith in that, unlike her, he decided not to be resistant to electricity, so he does actually have a weakness. Of course, then again, to be fair, Meryl didn't absorb fire, but her uh, blizzard, she just wasn't weak to it. But anyway, yeah, you can hit Kraken with electricity, and it will actually be effective on him. But of course, as per usual, you should be applying your usual buffs. You know, haste and temper and all that. Because, of course, you want to do a bit more damage. Ooh, because he's doing plenty to me. Oy. I do kind of wish you would do ink a bit more often, because blind really isn't that threatening of a status effect. I mean, it's a bit worse than it was in, you know, Final Fantasy VI when it was glitched, but, uh, nonetheless, it's not that effective on me. Now just watch as Max misses the next shot. Actually, it might even give him fewer hits, I think. Or Kraken could die. Well, he was indeed a gentleman. I guess he just wasn't as much of a fighter as I made him out to be. But still, watch out for that attack power, because it can really, really sting. Guess it's just a good thing he doesn't attack more often. And thus, with the smelly statue gone, mermaids and men could yet again go to the Lifespring Grotto and make out. And thus the day is saved. Thanks to the fact that Kraken was... Really? You're gonna do that? Well, thanks for that, guys. Now this whole thing is just plain anticlimactic. Thanks a lot. Story of my life. Complete something, get attacked by sea trolls and sea snakes. Just figures. <sighs> well, at least I can say Kraken was harder than those guys. Not that much of a compliment, but hey, after he went down so easily, he kind of needs anything he can get, really. But anyway... Oh, hey, we're outside of town for some reason. You know what? Let's stand in the town. We saved this town right here. In fact, we saved the ocean itself. We restored the crystal, Kraken's dead, and there's only one crystal remaining. Next time, we're gonna restore that one. Because really, what else do we have to do? Well, I can think, think of a few things. Actually, I can think of a lot of things.